We talked a little bit about this earlier. Uh, what does it look like in the classroom and, and how it links to um, collaborative inquiry, how it links to other forms of inquiry. Um, and basically all those project-based learning, inquiry-based uh, ideas start with items one and two, working with real ideas as we're developing shared learning goals. What separates knowledge building from the other ones is that we're sharing knowledge amongst the community and we're continuously improving the idea, right? And so we think about the video this morning with the boy doing the, the, the uh, machine, right? Um, that was, he was prepared to fail, he was prepared to improve his ideas, he was prepared to try again. And that's where knowledge building is really helping the classroom go. Um, we have a little video here of Glenn um, at a resource link called Learn, Teach, Lead, and he'll talk a little bit about knowledge building. So this is the website. Glenn will refer to himself as the handsome bowling guy. Knowledge building is a very, very, very natural process. It's something that is done out in the real world over and over and over again through collaboration, researching on an idea, collaborating again, and continually improving the knowledge. It is just the natural way that the world works outside of the classroom. So if it's good enough for the world outside of the classroom, it should be good enough for the world inside the classroom because that is the kind of work that they're going to be doing when they get out into the real world. So knowledge building actually works in a way that is quite natural. And let me give you an example. If you look at a technology such as cell phones, they've gone through a whole bunch of processes where they've gone from the really large down to the really small. In other words, the whole purpose behind changing the cell phone is through idea improvement. Just make it smaller, more efficient, and so forth, all the way down to where it's at its regular size right now. We can go forward not only just working with technology, but we can work with ideas. So uh, here you see the idea of working with an idea of gravitation and improved by Albert Einstein. So, you know, it, it happens all the time. It's just something that is naturally inherent in the world outside of the classroom. Let's just make it part of the world inside of the classroom and get kids used to this process. And so on this website, um, Glenn has a whole host of videos just talking about the, the stages. Um, Jason's on there, there's a bunch of teachers from around the province that are on there. And uh, earlier this year we were at a, a session and one of the former LSA leads was talking about a time he was in Florida. And, uh, and just stumbled across some teachers and they were chatting about um, you know, inquiry-based learning and they started talking about this guy, Glenn Wagner, on this website called Learn, Teach, Lead. And there's our provincial um, you know, resource with one of our teachers, our own locally grown teachers, uh, helping folks in Florida. Um, you know, move forward in this idea. So it was exciting for us, uh, it was exciting for Glenn. Uh, he was pretty pumped coming back to school after hearing that story. Uh, and I think just shows us, you know, how technology brings communities together. Okay, and we've shared the postcard with you on how to access Learn, Teach, Lead. And in the fall, we will be releasing um, more resources that are really, really valuable that you can use in your own school communities and your DLTs um, to introduce knowledge building in your school communities. So we talk about knowledge building, we talk about um, the types of questions. So generally speaking, knowledge building, you're looking at open questions. They're promising because they lead to more questions. They lead to deeper understanding. Um, it helps students build relationships um, and, and just keeps growing uh, a little bit like a wildfire. Um, we had a teacher a couple of years ago start it. Uh, he was really resistant for a long time and then he decided, well, I'll try it with grade 11 biology in an evolution unit. Um, and he sent Glenn and I an email at the end, one line, it works, amazing, that was it. Um, and he said in the two weeks of knowledge building that he did with his students, the students covered more depth and created more connections than he could have taught in a month in, through a traditional methodology. Um, and it was about the kids pushing their learning and wondering about what was going on. One thing is to keep in mind along the way, this doesn't abdicate teacher's responsibility or administrator's responsibility to still be there and involved with the students, right? We're not let, letting them go sitting back surfing the web. We are active uh, participants in the whole process, so. And I think the teachers yeah. are always uncovering those misconceptions of their students. Yeah. And if they realize that the students have missed a key concept, it's their responsibility to pull them back together and do some direct teaching around that concept that they've missed or misunderstood. It's not a free-for-all and it's not, you know, we hope you get it and if you don't, we're not worried about that. Not like that at all. And that was actually one of the key things for us when we were connecting teachers with knowledge building. 
um, knowing that they still had some of the traditional methods of teaching at their disposal. I think a lot of the feeling that I've had in feedback is when something new comes down the pipe, this is the silver bullet, this is going to fix education, leave everything you've done behind. And so teachers were saying, oh, we can still do direct teaching, we can still do the small group activity. They were excited that this became part of their larger framework, so that was uh, an important part of our process.